Hey you, welcome back to the channel and to 2023. Time honestly is just flying by. I can't believe it's 2023 right now. I just, it's okay. Anyway, I hope everyone had a good new year. I'm excited and I'm ready to go for the new year. I've got stuff that I wanna do personally, stuff that I wanna do with the channel. But you know what? Let me know down in the comments below what your new year's resolutions are, whether they're creative or personal or whatever. Let me know down in the comments below because you know what? Let's share and grow together. Aside from all of that though, this week we're talking about the editing changes that came to Resolve with 18.1. There's a lot of really cool updates in there, so I'm just gonna go through a couple that are sort of the highlights that I think are the most interesting. There's some new presets, there's new quality of life improvements, and there's some updates to the speed editor, which is great. I love using it, so really psyched about all of that stuff. If that sounds good to you, then make sure you hit the like and the subscribe button as well down below. It helps me out a ton, and with the channel moving forward as well, gaining new subscribers constantly, which is great. I'm that much closer to monetizing, so that'll really help the channel out as well. Anyway, let's jump into Resolve. All right, so first thing, we're on the edit page here, and vertical video is big for social media now, obviously. The Resolve update has now made it easier to choose that as a preset and to save it for yourself as well. So if we open up the project settings here, and go to master settings on the left side. We now have this option here in the settings, which is use vertical resolution. That will flip your vertical and horizontal here and in the settings and give you some new options. Now, if you're doing reels or shorts, you can choose the 1080 by 1920 option, for example. That'll let you upload straight to vertical video formats. Presets are also supported by this, so you can click these three little dots here in the corner uh, once you've gone through and set everything the way that you wanted in the settings. And either do save settings to default, which will save the current settings that you chose as the default preset, or you can come in and create a new preset from your current settings. You can always come back and choose your new preset as the default one, but that way you can sort of separate everything out if you need to. Now with this, let's say that you just edit vertical videos or that's a format you use all the time, you can just come in here and select it as a default without having to fidget through the project settings every single time you start a new project. All right, speaking of delivery options as well, there are additional settings when delivering to YouTube. If we make our way to the deliver page and then scroll over to your YouTube preset here at the top, that's always been there, but if you scroll down, there are some more options here than before. You can also set chapters here from markers and set the markers you wanna use. So that way, let's say I use blue markers for all my chapter markers markers, then you can choose that here and YouTube will automatically recognize that as the chapters. You can also upload thumbnails straight from Resolve as well. So you just go in and choose your image file here and it'll upload it along with your video. And obviously you have your visibility settings and categories here as well. So that way it doesn't just go live. You can choose to private it or unlist it until you choose to make it public. If you go over to this little menu in the corner as well, you have the option to review before upload as well, which is helpful. So you can check that on if you want it as an option. Now back on the edit page here, one of the big things was editing and trim features didn't work on gaps between video clips. So let's say you had two clips and you're editing here like this where there's a gap. I think before you had to go in and actually select the gap with your mouse and then ripple delete if I remember. Now you can certainly still do that. It's still an option, but which I think the default for is shift delete or backspace. So you could select and hit shift delete and there you go, the clips move in. Now, usually if I'm moving through an edit, it's annoying to have to stop and go in and then try to select things like the gap here just to delete it. Well, now with this new update, trim and edit key bindings work on gaps as well. So if I come to the end of a clip here like this, I can just hit my key bind I'm already editing with, which is end to playhead, which I have key bound to E and there you go, the gap is gone. Speaking of which, I think these key binds are just my favorite. So let me show you guys how I usually edit as well. I edit with them in Premiere Pro as well. They're called something slightly different, but over in Premiere, it's called Ripple Trim Next Edit to Playhead, which I also have bound on the E key. Q is Ripple Trim Previous Edit to Playhead, and in Resolve, it's called Start to Playhead. On the W key, I had Split Clip in Resolve or Add Edit in Premiere Pro, and that way you can add an edit point or split the clip that you're working on, effectively doing the same thing. You keep playing, and then you edit back to that last edit you made. Throughout my first and second passes, I usually barely move my hand from this position, and I can typically get through footage very fast that way. Lastly, they've just generally improved the speed editor functionality on the edit page as well. Originally, this was designed to work well with the cut page. That's where a lot of the functionality shines, 
but they've enabled a lot of the features on the edit page as well. Things like full screening, resizing, things like that work on the edit page. All of your trim, roll, slip, edit things are improved as well. If I hold down audio level and use the scroll wheel too, you can now adjust audio levels for clips. So overall, just improve functionality. Now, I don't have that many multicam things right now, but I know multicam buttons now work to select through your sync bin as well, switching the camera angles. Improving functionality is always great. I made a video on the speed editor a while back and I still use it. I love it, especially for the navigation aspect and rolling edits. Now, kind of last thing here, I'm just gonna mention this as well. If you work in a collaborative environment, that's to say multiple people are working on the same project, they've now improved that workflow as well. Now, only the timeline that the person is actually working on locks instead of before I believe it locked everything out. I don't have a cloud or server project right now to show you, but it's always good to see cloud improvements as well. All right, so that's where I'm gonna leave it for this week. A lot of really cool improvements, which is always great to see. With every update that they make, Resolve just keeps getting better, and it's nice to see that they're listening to feedback as well. Now, if you guys like this video or you learned something, don't forget to hit the like button as well and hit the subscribe button if you're not subscribed already to the channel. Until next time, go out there and create something. Lot of it.